Hi everyone! My name is Miss Haley and I am here to teach you how to play the viola. The viola is a wonderful instrument. You're going to love learning how to play it. I've been teaching for 25 years. I've had students as young as four years old and as old as 65. So if you are anywhere in that age range, I'm sure I can help you learn how to play. So let's get started. This is your introductory video. It's very important that you don't skip this. This is the foundation for all of the things that you're gonna learn in the future. And uh, I don't want you to be confused going forward. So take just a few minutes and watch this introductory video. It's gonna help set up a great foundation for you. So the first thing that we need to go over when learning how to play an instrument is the care of the instrument. As basic as how to take it out of its case. I'm gonna show you my viola case. Your case is probably gonna look different. You might have a hard case that's shaped like, kind of looks like it's shaped like the instrument, or you might have a rectangular case that's hard as well, like a, like a thick plastic material, or you might have one that's covered with like a, a, some type of material. Doesn't matter what case you have, it's okay. They all kind of open the same. The reason it's important to learn how to open your case properly is because if you open it upside down or the wrong way, your viola is going to tumble onto the floor and probably get broken. Hopefully not, but I'm here to help prevent accidents. And so the very first thing I teach all of my students is how to take it out of the case. So let me show you my case. So I have more of a professional level viola case. Um, student student um, cases are usually hard on the outside, but mine is like a, it's got some material wrapped around it on the outside. I've got these knobs right here, and I've also got some knobs here. And that's generally how you're gonna tell the bottom of your case. Now, without that, um, if you don't have that, you can kind of see the top of the cases are usually gonna be round. Most of them are going to have these little knobs right here. Now, the first thing, do not open your case on your lap. That's one of the greatest causes of instrument falls and spills that there is. So, we always lay it down on the floor to open it up. But you never want to leave an open case or your instrument by itself on the floor because someone could walk by and kick it. Say you're in an orchestra class. Someone's going to maybe walk by and step on it. It's just not a good practice to have, but you definitely want to open it on the ground. You can leave your case on the ground and then you pick up your instrument and, and hold it on your lap until your teacher is ready to go, whatever that is. So I'm going to show you how to open your case. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my case here on the ground. I've got the knobs on the bottom here. Some of your cases might have a shoulder strap. It's okay if they don't. Mine just happened to come up on, but I'm making sure that I'm laying this right side up. Now, your case might have latches where you have to kind of like flip them um, open. Mine has a zipper and it has this kind of thing here. So I'll show you how to do that. But first I open my zippers. And then this right here. I'm just gonna pick it up to show you because this is latched closed. This is gonna slide one direction. Now you might even have one that where you have to squeeze and then pull up like there's little latches on the side. So, I'm gonna set it down first. I'm gonna open up this latch here and then you just pull the case open. It's pretty simple. Okay, so mine comes with this cloth on the top to just kind of help keep it covered. Not all cases are gonna come with that, but some do. And if you have it, I would use it. It's just an extra protection from dust or even if it gets bumped around a little bit, it's got something soft. Um, again, all cases are different. I'm just showing you what mine looks like. I've got a little Velcro right here that you can help. It helps hold the instrument, but some don't have it. It's okay if they don't. So once you've got this nice and safe on the ground, you've got to open it up. You can open up the Velcro if you've got it. And then you grab the viola from right here and just kind of gently, you can touch those strings. And you can take it up that way. Pretty easy. I'm going to set it back down just for a second to show you um, how to take a bow out. There's these little things that twist right here on my case. Some just have a little hook. There are, there's so many case manufacturers out there, it's hard for me to be able to predict what kind of a case that you have. So if you have a question, please put it in the comments and I can help you if you're having a hard time. Now this is the bow. So 
we're gonna, I'm gonna twist this so that it's, it's um, sideways so that I can slide the bow out. But I'm gonna be careful because the tip of the bow is really fragile and it's inside of this little, um, like, like kind of secured in here. So what you have to do is you kind of pull it out and barely put it at an angle and then you gently slide the bow out. Now, if you, if you pull it out and you, and you try to pull this way while the bow is still inside of, the, of that, little, um, that little compartment there, it's probably gonna snap the tip off. So you gotta be really, really careful, okay? Now, I'm gonna leave my viola here while we go through some things, but um, in general, you just don't wanna leave your case open on the ground. You're gonna store your instrument on the ground, you're gonna open your case up on the ground, but you don't wanna leave it open on the ground like I said before, because you don't want your instrument to get hurt or damaged. Um, we also don't ever want to store our instruments upside down. You want to make sure your case is either flat or up on its side, but not upside down. And um, it's because you don't want to put pressure on the top of the instrument and then have um, that pressure cause any kind of like damage. So it's good practice to always lay it right side up or on the side. So the next thing that I like to go through with my students as we are learning the foundational part of um, learning how to play is the parts of the viola so, and the bow. And so I'm going to show you those right now. I'm going to go through these kind of quickly, so feel free to stop, pause, rewind, take some notes if you need to. Um, so here we go. I'm going to start from the top of the instrument. So right here, it's called the scroll. And you can see it kind of wraps around like a little, like, a little, like if you ever roll paper up like a scroll, it kind of looks like that. Um, and I'm not gonna tell you every tiny little detailed part. If I, for, if I forget to tell you one or if I don't include it, don't get mad at me. <laughs> you can ask me in the comments and I'd be happy to answer there. But these are just the basic ones that you're gonna need to know, okay? So we've started with the scroll. These are called the pegs, P-E-G-S, pegs. These are hooked up to these strings right here. And this is if, you have, if your string is pretty out of tune, you're gonna use that to tune it. Um, so these are pegs. This it, this back side right here, kind of this whole area actually, but I kind of use the um, this this tan color to just identify that this is the neck of the instrument. So you think of this as like the head, and these are the shoulders, kind of like the neck if you're thinking of like a body. Um, and then this black part right here, this is the fingerboard, and this is where you're going to put your fingers. Okay, this is the only area that you should put your fingers. Don't put your fingers down here on the strings. Our fingers have oil on them, and if the oil gets on our strings, it can cause some damage, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, the different strings, now if you're looking at your viola, and you look to the, the, the right side here, this is the A string, the D string is next to it, then you've got the G, and then the C. There's a music alphabet, and uh, it's letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then it starts over again. Okay, so we've got A, D, G, C. And A is the highest string, C is the lowest string. And you'll get more into that as we go. Down here is the bridge, this, this part right here that's holding the strings up. These swirly cursive looking letters are called F holes. And then down here we've got these little spinny things here. And you might have one, you might have all four, you might have just a couple, you might not even have any. But if you do have even just one or two of these, well, all, I have all four on my, my instrument, they're called fine tuners. So if your instrument doesn't need the, the peg up here for big tuning, but just a tiny bit out of tune, you would use these. This is called the tail piece. And then the final part I'm gonna talk about is the chin rest right here. And this is obviously where you're gonna put your, your chin or your jaw when you hold the instrument. So it's a place for your chin to rest. Okay, so that's part of the viola. Let's set this down. All right, so now we're gonna go with the parts of the bow. I'm gonna gently take this bow out by opening that side and gently sliding it out. Now the bow has fewer parts to it, so remember. The hair is made from a horse and a horse's hair, so this is just called horse hair. And you definitely don't want to touch your fingers on the horse hair. Again, our fingers have oil, and we don't want to damage our bow hair. Now, you will have to replace your bow hair every like six to 12 months, and I'll tell you more how to do that as we get further along in lessons. But generally, we can preserve the life of our bow if we don't touch. 
touch the hair. So don't ever just grab it like this, okay? We only grab down here, and this is called the frog. And then up here is the tip, and then this right here is called the stick of the instrument, or the, of the bow, sorry. So those are just the four parts right there, and we wanna have very gentle care with the bow because they are very fragile. So let me put this back in my case. Now it's really, really important that we know the names of um, the parts of our instrument because often we'll say, we'll be referring to a part that we need to either put our hand at or we need to adjust. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then it's gonna be hard to, to remember and recall that. So what I really want you to do is to go over the parts of the viola, the parts of the bow, get someone to help, a friend or a sibling or a parent, or if you're an adult, get one of your kids or a neighbor or somebody to help quiz you on the, the parts of the instrument. You can watch this video as many times as you need to, to memorize the parts of your instrument and your bow, but it's gonna, it doesn't, shouldn't take you too long to internalize that, but um, it's really helpful if you have that learned. So once you do, now this is something that you're gonna need to purchase in addition to your instrument. Most instruments don't come with these, but this is called a shoulder rest. And I keep mine in a little compartment in my case. Um, a lot of cases don't, aren't able to fit them. So you'll have to get like either an additional bag or carry it separately. But mine looks like this. And this is a really important thing to have to help you have good posture and hold the instrument because if you don't have good posture, it's gonna be painful, it's gonna be uncomfortable, you'll hold it wrong, you'll play it wrong. There's a lot of places out there that sell cheap versions of these and they are absolutely horrible for your head and your neck and your spine and they will cause more damage than good. So the two brands that I recommend, this is called a Kuhn, it's a German made um, shoulder rest and they run maybe around 50 to $70. And um, then there's a, a less expensive version that I really, really like, like this one called Everest, like Mount Everest. Those are the two most ergonomical shoulder rests to help you hold your instrument correctly. If you get a different one than that, you're going to set yourself up for some serious issues down the line. So I strongly recommend getting an Everest or a Kuhn. Oh, and Everests are probably 25 to $35. And so a lot of my students, I've played with an Everest before, I really like it. Just happened to have a Kuhn in my case. I've got both of them. I really like both of them. They're really, really similar. I feel like Everests are like, this is kind of thin uh, here. Everests have a little more thickness to them. So they're, they're, really, they're really good um, for someone starting out because you want a little more support there. You can get these on Amazon. You can probably find them at your local music store. If not, they can order it for you, but um, I always have found mine on Amazon. Now this one has the feet that collapse and adjust. You don't have to have one of those, but this one did. So, I mean, I, I just got it and wanted to try it and I've had great success with it. These little legs kind of adjust. They also screw completely off. And then you've also got these um, ways to adjust the size of your, um, like the width of your coon, all of that kind of stuff. So I strongly recommend this. So um, when you take your instrument out and then you look at the shape of this, the part that's gonna, that kind of bends upward, if you look, it's gonna kind of look like it, it would rest on your shoulder like this. So sometimes I've had my students put it on their shoulder the right way and then they kind of put their instrument up and then they kind of, oh, eyeball it. Another way to look at it is this, this short, the shorter area or the area that curves up goes on the same side as your chin rest. So I grab my viola by the neck usually, and just kind of hold it gently. You don't want to hold too hard because your strings will kind of get out of tune, but you just hold it firm enough so you're not going to drop it. And then you put one side on here and then one side up kind of down lower than you normally probably would and then you just kind of slide it up and I like mine to kind of go straight across it, it doesn't have to you can kind of adjust it everybody's neck and shoulders are going to be different so you just kind of have to do what works for you now to hold the instrument I'm sitting right now just for the frame of this shot but what I would like you to do is stand up and you stand with your feet shoulder width apart and then your left foot is gonna come out just a tiny bit more, um, like away from you, 
up, kind of like up, out in front a little bit because it gives a little more support because you're gonna have the viola on your left side. So you're gonna use your left hand. You hold the viola with your left side of your body, okay? It's not gonna be, it doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed. That doesn't matter. I've taught right-handed and left-handed students. No one plays with a left-handed bow or left-handed instrument. Everybody plays with the same thing, doesn't matter. So in order to hold this, we're gonna place this on top of our shoulder. And then you're gonna lift your chin up and you're gonna just kind of find your shoulder rest, your, I mean your chin rest, sorry. And then you just kind of rest your head there. It's not your chin itself that's gonna sit on this. You don't wanna turn your head and have this all you know, stressed and pointed out. But you're gonna just kind of place your head on here and then you've got kind of like your jawline and it's gonna just rest there. Now, your hand does not hold the viola. Your head holds the viola, okay? You're gonna just put your head and your weight here and you're gonna practice letting go. I want you to do this standing up and do it in a carpeted area in case your instrument slips. Um, I haven't had very many people drop their instruments. No one's instrument has broken if it does fall, on, but, it, but you wanna protect it and put it up um, on the carpet, okay? So we're gonna try that again. I'm gonna just put this on top here of your shoulder if you want to be on top. You don't wanna hold it out in front like this. This is wrong. Put it on top of your shoulder, lift your head, just kind of place it down. And you want your your body to look as natural as possible. I don't think you could just be having a conversation. You've got this instrument sticking out of your neck. I have a more in-depth video on how to actually hold the viola on my channel if you want to find that as well. But this is really important. We don't want to ever get in the habit of holding with our hand. Our hand does not hold the instrument. You'll see why. There's a lot you got to do with your fingers, your hand. It moves all around all the time. And if you're if you get into the habit of holding it firmly with your hand, you're not going to be able to play very well. So once again, you do this. Our hands on. There you go. Super easy. Now it's okay if it's not super easy. It's it it's going to take some time to learn. But that that's what you try to do is just practice and practice and practice until that starts to feel more and more comfortable. Okay, let's grab our bow. Um, I'm going to show you a couple things about the bow, and then I'm going to show you how to hold it. So this little screw here at the bottom, this twists it to tighten it and to loose, and then you twist it the other way to loosen it. Uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Um, you don't want your viola bow to be very tight, but you do need to loosen it just a few turns when you put it away because there's a metal rod that runs inside of your of your uh, bow that you don't want to over tighten, and you don't want to put too much tension on if it doesn't need to be tight. So the tightest, so I'm going to twist nice to the right, the tightest that you want to get it is barely so that like if you were to stick your pinky in, and I'm not going to because you're not supposed to touch the hair, but if you were to stick your pinky through there, it would barely make it, okay? Look, that's, it's not very tight. If your bow is going, ooh, that, you've got way too much tension. And then you're going to maybe remember, it's like maybe four, five, six turns to tighten it, and then you do the same to loosen it, okay? Again, we don't touch the hair. Um, so I'm gonna hold this the stick and let me show you how to hold the bow. Now this is probably gonna be the trickiest thing because there's a lot to it, but once you get it, it's great. And you're gonna be able to play with a lot more um, sound quality and ease if we start out right with a good bow, bow hold, okay? And I also got a, a pretty in-depth video on this as well on my channel. So. I'm gonna go over this here, but if you wanna watch another one, just look for how to hold a viola slash, or a violin slash viola bow. It's really similar um, on how, I think it's basically the same thing, how to hold a violin, but a viola bow is gonna be bigger, a little bit heavier, so it, it feels different, but the, the general hold is the same. So, how I get my students to do this, a couple different ways. We usually make a little rabbit with our fingers, Okay, now my thumb is a, is a bent thumb here. You see that? It's not straight like this. So we make it this, this little circle here for his mouth and his nose. Okay, and you're gonna keep this, this shape as we put the bow up, okay? And we're gonna hold at the frog. And see this little silver part here? Your, your thumb is gonna just sit right there against it and then the bunny's mouth goes over, okay? So he's gonna bite his carrot like this. And your two middle fingers are going to rest over that. And you see what part of the frog? It's right here, okay? And it's 
these, the, the top part of my, this, this final joint here that it rests over, all right? And then the pointer finger comes down on that same joint, but the pinky stands on the top, just like this. Now, when you take your hand away, this hand from holding the bow, you're gonna feel it in your pinky right here. The pinky really has to hold this up. There's a couple bow exercises that I like to do to help strengthen your hands. You're gonna be using muscles that you've really never had to use before for this kind of a thing. So once you're comfortable holding this bow, it's okay to stop and shake your hand out and regroup if you need to. That's fine. Once you get your gimbal hold, we're gonna do windshield wipers. So make sure you're not gonna hit anyone or anything. You keep your hand level. We just kind of slowly go back and forth like this. And we do 25 of them every day in my studio. And then we do what's called elevators, which we go straight up and down like this. And you really feel this in your pinky. We do 25 of these. And then we do rocket ships. And you want to have the tip of your bow straight up to the ceiling the whole time. We don't do this, okay? We're going to go straight up so your wrist is going to bend like this. Come back down and we blast off. Sometimes we count three, two, one, blast off. We go straight up to the ceiling and then straight back down as best as you can. We do 25 of those. So once you've done all of these exercises, you feel comfortable holding the bow, you feel comfortable holding the viola, all while standing up, then we can get into playing. So once you guys have practiced this enough, then I want you to mo move on to my next video, which is going to be lesson one. Uh, and we will uh, start you on how to actually play the viola. So work on all of these things. Do your bow exercises. Practice holding your instrument. Practice saying the names and parts of the, the instrument. And then, and then you're going to be all set. These lessons are made free to you. Uh, I'm not charging anything for them. All I ask that you do is you hit that subscribe button down there and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.